Each year, over 2,500 babies in the United States are born with a cleft palate. Now, this birth defect occurs when a baby's lip or mouth does not form properly. We spoke with Dr. Daniel Jeffers of Children's Hospital of Orange County to learn the possible causes for this birth defect and what can be done to correct it. They come in a couple of different varieties. They can be a complete cleft from where the teeth are all the way to the back where the uvula, will hang you down anything is, or it can just be part of the back part of the palate. Um, the complete clefts are usually associated with a cleft lip, but um, they can rarely occur by themselves, although it's very, very rare. Um, cleft palates, more by the, just the cleft palate itself, just the back half of the palate, um, is more common to occur by itself without a cleft lip. There is some family history that's involved, but not as much as you would think. If you have no history of clefting in your family and you have a child with a cleft lip, your chance of having another one is only 4%. It goes up if you have an, I've already had a child with a, two children with a cleft, or if one of the parents has a cleft or another close relative. But it's not one of those things where you get a 50% risk. The risk is actually really small. There are so many genes that are involved in facial development and actually development of the body in general at four to eight weeks that we don't really understand all the interaction. We know some of it's genetic. Uh, Asians and Hispanics have a higher rate of cleft lip and cleft lip and palate. African Americans almost never. Uh, Caucasians somewhere in the middle. There's environmental factors, there's prenatal care, there's all sorts of things involved, so it's a complicated situation. The standard for fixing a cleft lip is at three months of age. That's when the children are old enough to undergo anesthesia safely. The palate's not done until about nine months to a year. We try to get the palate fixed before they start developing speech. You can do it when they're younger, but the operation's technically much more difficult. It's easier to perform when they're about a year of age. Uh, there is some data to suggest that doing a palate repair at a year of age actually harms facial growth, um, but you have to balance that against having a child that's five years old that nobody can understand. So the, pretty much the gold standard now is doing it at nine months to a year. The palate repairs um, are only problematic in older kids in that uh, they may not have the support system for speech therapy. So I've done older children here in the U.S., children that have come from other countries that are now here in the United States and never had their palate repaired. And in the United States, I can refer them to the appropriate services so they can get the therapy that they need to learn how to use their, their palate appropriately. When you're going to third world countries, that's not always available. In fact, it's very rarely available. But I still think they get enough improvement to warrant doing the surgery. Without having your palate fixed, uh, no one's ever going to be able to understand what you say. And not having the clip lift rep lip repaired, um, it would, you'd be a social outcast. You know, when I go to sometimes the third world countries and I treat these people in their 20s that have not had a lip repair, you know, and their lives are just, they spend most of their time on the fringes of, of their society. I've had some that are different immediately afterwards. They make different sounds. Uh, they, they seem to be progressing rapidly. Some other children require speech therapy for a few years. Some children may need speech therapy until they're seven or eight. And then there's a small percentage, the number is around 15, maybe 20%, that will need revision surgery on their palate because their speech doesn't improve enough in order to have uh, a speech that's, that's, that's good. Dr. Jeffers talks about children in third world countries who he helps. Well, I've never gone to Vietnam before. I've gone to Central America quite a bit, South America a few times. Uh, this is a trip to a government-run children's hospital that's a brand new facility. And uh, they were uh, the people, the group that I am associated with was invited there by the Vietnamese government to go to the hospital, do operations, and teach the local physicians how to do some of these procedures. Um, as with most mission trips, I never know what's going to show up until I get there. So I just try to fix whatever I can that's not going to cause a complication to the local guy after I leave. Dr. Jaffers tells us of another patient story to correct this defect. One of the reasons I take care primarily of pediatric patients is that kids don't ask for the stuff that happens to them. They're generally born with it or they've acquired it somehow. It's uh, not that they did something they weren't supposed to be doing at 2 o'clock in the morning. The most recent one I had was a young lady who was 24. She had her palate repaired and her lip repaired and never had any other surgery. And her speech was very bad and very nasally because she couldn't close off the back of her palate. She couldn't breathe through one side of her nose. Her lip was a mess. And we did a six-hour operation. We did her nose, we did her lip, we did her palate. And a week later, she was speaking perfectly clear and was crying in the office because people could finally understand her. And she wasn't having to move her face in strange ways to be understood.